Hello. I would like to welcome James Burke to my web series. James Burke is a science historian, author, television producer, and a futurist. He has written for Scientific American, New Scientist, Vogue, Time Magazine, and the Encyclopedia Britannica Online. He has created and presented many television shows for the BBC, including the major television series Connections and The Day the Universe Changed. James Burke has lectured to audiences worldwide, including at the Smithsonian, MIT, NASA, IBM, Microsoft, the European Parliament, and the U.S. National Security Agency. He is currently in the process of developing a new connection series about our future. I wanted to ask you more about triggers of change. And in your video creating a new show, you said that uh, there were innovations coming within my lifetime that would challenge every institution. And what do you mean by that? Well, in that particular case, I was referring to the arrival of what is called the nanofabricator. And basically, a nanofabricator is something that works at the nano level. And what you do is you, you pull together individual atoms into groups so that they make molecules. For example, two atoms of hydrogen and one atom, atom of oxygen is H2O, and that's water. And because I knew I was going to talk to you, I prepared this one. This is sweet tea. So anything you want can be produced by putting single atoms into molecules and the molecules together into groups to make stuff like sweet tea. Now you can do that to make absolutely anything because everything is made of molecules of stuff. I was talking to someone the other day and they thought that maybe you would get everything free for the nanofabricator, all the designs, but then if you wanted a name brand design, you'd have to buy it. And that way there'd still be a market for things. Like if you want the name brand shoe, you've got to buy the shoe. Otherwise you've got a no name regular shoe. You, you hack the shoe make manufacturers and you find out what the molecular structure of the shoe is and you make it. And all, don't forget, all you have to do is change one molecule and it's not the same shoe. <laughs> I wanted to ask you if you had seen any other triggers in today's world. This is very, very difficult because th let me say something about prediction in general. I think most people think that, that the future is out there waiting. I happen to believe the future is nowhere, that the future is now and that we are making it and because that's what happens. Everything we do adds up to becoming what it is that happens and what, ha what it is that happens makes the future. So there is no future. The future is here. And so what you really need to think about when you're wondering how the future is going to be is what do I want the future to be? Because the future will end up being what we want it to be because we will do things that make it happen. For example, not wanting to buy this so that company goes out of business and preferring to buy that so that company's big success and is there in the future, the other one isn't. Uh, and that happens at every level of your life. And every single one of us makes the future in some way or other by everything we do. The aggregate of what we all do becomes the future. I mean, if you start on your life, walk out the front door tomorrow morning and turn left instead of right, your future will be different because you'll meet different people, one of whom might change your life and cause you to become something, something you weren't going to be. And that in turn causes you to have an effect on society, which you weren't going to have. And now you're a future maker in that sense. Had you turned right and found other people, the future would have been different. So. We all, every moment of every day, make the future. So it's difficult to say, I mean, the, the easy things about predicting, I hate that word, but there we are, is yes, I mean, there are big things that happen. For example, in our own past, part of the reason we are now what we are is because somebody invented a computer, somebody invented the airplane, somebody invented the microwave oven, somebody invented a car, and so on and so forth, big deal stuff. But you see, if at one point in the past, Nobody had wanted to take any notice of those two crazy uh, guys on a beach in America with this thing flying. I mean, they got publicity because somebody wrote about them, but nobody, if nobody had written about them, I wonder whether flying would have happened when it did, and then because of happening at a different time, had a different effect on a different society, which by that time was different. And this is true of everything. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't know what to look for. The big things are clear, of course. I mean, there are going to be big things in medicine, there are going to be big things in computing, there are going to be big things in modes of travel, big things in education, big things in 
artificial intelligence and what it can do for us. But there are going to be a myriad things that each one of us or little groups of us or even large groups of us are going to bring to bear on whether things happen or don't simply because they don't want them. There is a technique using big data and predictive analytics that is now beginning to be so big that you can find out what people want. I mean, without wanting to frighten anybody, <laughs> I mean, you know, it is now possible to find out what you use your credit card for, how you use your telephone, where you spend your money on holidays, shopping, blah, 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 and add all that up to show how you run your life, how you prefer to live. And then put that together with the other 327 million people around you and see what they all want. And then it's easy, really, to look at that vast amount of data and say, what's the trend happening here? I mean, they're not talking to each other, but they're doing things because they all seem to like that and not that. So they seem to be tending towards wanting this kind of future and not that kind of future. That ability to use big data and predictive analytics is very soon going to be able to get us close to an automated way of finding out what it is that's happening that is likely to cause change to occur. Well, that's it. I'm James Burke, and thank you for watching.